Hello everyone. Uh, this is Hossein Mahmoud Saim. Uh, uh, I'm I'm a software engineer of AppScot. So our today's webinar is introducing Kubestash, elevate your Kubernetes backup and recovery strategies. So let's see the contents of today's webinar. First, I will discuss well, why did we build Kubestash. Then I will demystify the enhanced features that have been introduced in Kubestash. Then we will see the backup flow of Kubestash. And then we will see the restore process in Kubestash. And after that, we will see a demo of a workload backup using Kubestash. Then we will see some of the upcoming features. And finally, there will be a question and answering session. So let's get started. So uh, as you have already know that we have an existing project Stash, which is also a backup and recovery solution for Kubernetes workloads, databases, and applications. Um, so why did we build Kubestash? Uh, as we have, uh, as we have in, engaged with an increasing number of uh, uh, Stash enterprise uh, customers, uh, we have come across some intriguing uh, scenarios uh, that uh, could not be addressed with our current APIs. So we uh, basically, we had to rebuild, uh, re-architect and redesign our Stash project and introduce Kubestash. And uh, basically, uh, Kubestash not only addresses the previously unmet requirements, but also it enhances the Stash capabilities and adaptability. Now let's see uh, some of the new features that have been added to uh, Kubestash. Uh, first one I want to discuss is uh, the multi storage backup feature. So using this feature, you uh, now can provide multiple storage options within the same backup configuration. Uh, so basically you can keep your backup data uh, in multiple uh, cloud backend. So uh, the same data can be replicated across different cloud storage. So another feature is multiple schedules. Uh, now you can provide uh, multiple schedules for the same backup. So one benefit, uh, one benefit is that you can uh, keep your uh, monthly backup in one storage and the daily backup in a cheaper storage. And another is the reusable backend feature. Uh, so previously for Stash, you have to uh, you had to create the repository object every time when you create a new backup. So you have to repeat the same uh, cl uh, cloud backend information again and again. Uh, but in Kubestash, we have introduced a new CRD, which is called backup, uh, backup storage. And you can actually create the backup storage object once, and then you can uh, reuse it across different namespaces. And another feature is auto synchronization. Uh, it uh, it means that you can actually create the backup storage object, and Kubestash will automatically uh, syn synchronize your repositories from the backend. Uh, and it will uh, uh, so basically you don't have to create the resources again when you uh, when you want to set up the backup in a fresh cluster. So I also the repositories will in turn uh, synchronize the snapshots uh, object. Uh, so you don't have to create them uh, too. Now let's see some of the improvements on uh, the existing features. Uh, the first one is the updated repository stru uh, structure. We have, uh, we have uh, enhanced the repository structure to support multiple drivers like uh, WallG or RESTIC and uh, also the auto synchronization feature that I have already uh, mentioned and also the point in time recovery. And then we have uh, introduced unified snapshot concept. Previously, uh, for a single application, um, for uh, different components of a single application, uh, there were different snapshots. So thus, uh, the backup session results in multiple snapshots. So when you want to restore the previous version of, an, uh, of your application, um, uh, so when you want to restore the previous version rather than the latest version, you uh, the, this was difficult to work with. So now uh, in the unified snapshot concept, you uh, one snapshot can actually uh, contain multiple components of your application. Uh, so uh, the, uh, when you want to restore the previous version, uh, it will uh, make things easy for you. 
and the next uh, next improvement is the hook um, uh, we have introduced a new crd which is a hook template and uh, this uh, can be reusable across different namespaces and uh, it also supports double opt-in and uh, you can actually uh, run uh, custom containers uh, in a job uh, as a hook also uh, the hook has retry feature and also the timeout feature so if your hook execution fails for some reason it can be retried and you can also set timeout so after a certain period of time the hook uh, if the hook execution is not completed it can be set to failed and the next improvement is uh, on the add-on mechanism uh, now uh, we have introduced a new uh, crd called add-on which is the logical uh, representation of the stash add-on uh, so using this add-on you now have better control over the add-ons and now all the backups happen through add-on so uh, now uh, you we have uh, just one add-on for backup and restore also uh, there is a volume and volume mounts option in the add-on so uh, if you want to use them uh, if you want to use volumes and volume mounts for the backup executor you can provide it in the add-on and the next thing is uh, the auto backup improvement uh, the auto backup uh, is now more customizable and it gives you uh, better control over the backup process it now supports pa passing arbitrary variables uh, through the annotations and the next feature is a retention policy improvement um, so uh, retention policy we have now introduced a new crd called retention policy and it is actually reusable across different namespaces and uh, it also supports a double opt-in uh, the retention policy now also have uh, the maximum uh, maximum duration so if you set a maximum duration for snapshots the snapshot will be um yeah, will be uh, outdated after that period and uh, will be cleaned up by qbstash also you can now set retention policy for your failed snapshots this is the simplified uh, view of our QBStash backend. Uh, I, ha um, I have already told about the backup storage. It basically stores the uh, uh, cloud bucket information. So it points to a bucket. And this backup storage uh, contains uh, multiple repositories. And the repositories contains snapshots inside of it. And in the snapshot, the snapshot actually uh, uh, contains the component uh, backup information. So it can be the database component or can be uh, the workload component. And he, here is the uh, simplified version of the backup configuration. And uh, the backup configuration specifies uh, the uh, target. Um, and it also specifies uh, multiple sessions. Uh, so you can actually provide uh, the multiple schedule in these uh, sessions. and this session can specify uh, uh, multiple repositories uh, if you want to uh, if you want to keep your uh, or store your data in multiple uh, multiple backend then you can provide multiple repositories so these repositories refers uh, to uh, different uh, backup storages and uh, from this session backup session will be created periodically according to, to the schedule so this is the backup flow for QBStash. Uh, so user first have to create the backup storage object, providing necessary uh, backend information. And then uh, the QBStash, also, uh, QBStash operator watches for the backup storage object. So when it finds uh, a backup storage, it initializes it by uploading the uh, uh, metadata uh, in the backend and uh, then the user have to create the backup configuration object the cube the cube storage operator also uh, also watches for the backup configuration and when it finds the backup configuration it will uh, it will find out the repositories that have been provided by the user and uh, creates them one by one and uh, cube storage operator also watches for this repository object and when it finds one it initializes it in the backend and uh, by initializing i i mean that it, it uh, uploads the repository metadata in the backend so when these things are ready qbstash creates a cron job 
uh, for uh, uh, for the sessions uh, for multiple sessions there will be multiple cron jobs so uh, the, the cron job periodically creates uh, the backup session according to the schedule and the kubistrash operator watches for the backup session also and when it finds a session it creates the snapshots so if you provide multiple repositories for a session there will be multiple snapshots one for each repository so each repository will be uh, mapped uh, so uh, to a certain snapshot and then uh, the, if the snapshots are ready the kubis shopper to resolve the provided add-on for the session and creates a backup job for it and this backup job executes the add-on specific backup logic and then it uploads the data uh, to the backend and uh, finally this uh, backup job updates the snapshot uh, resource and when the snapshot is uh, failed or succeeded uh, the kubernetes operator uploads the snapshot in the bucket in the cloud and here is the simplified version of the restore session it just simply specify a target and a snapshot as a data source so this uh, this snapshot will be restored into this target and here is the restore flow for kubestash user first have to create the restore session object and uh, kubestash operator watches for it and when it finds a restore session it uh, it will pause any backup uh, configured for the same target and uh, then kubistrash operator will resolve the restore add-on and creates uh, the restore job according to it and the restore job downloads the data from the bucket and execute the add-on specific restore logic and then uh, the restore job will update the restore session object now let's see a demo for uh, a workload backup using kubistash Okay, so this is uh, this is the YAML of our add-on for the workload backup. Uh, so in the spec section, there are two uh, two uh, fields. One is backup task, and another is restore tasks. So the backup task uh, specifies the backup capabilities for this uh, workload add-on, and the restore task uh, specifies the restore capabilities for this workload add-on. And uh, here you can see that the, there is just one task here, uh, and which is volume backup. So this task will uh, backup the volume of a particular workload and there can be another task like manifest backup so uh, it will back up the manifest of the workload so uh, if you see the volume backup task it has a, a function section similarly uh, as a stash also the driver is restrict so it will use the restrict driver to uh, back up the data and here in the parameter section um, the uh, defined parameters uh, uh, de defined parameters will be here uh, for the volume backup we have the paths parameter the uh, which specifies the paths to backup and the exclude parameter which will specify which pattern or path to exclude during the backup and the if the required uh, field is true then uh, it means that this is uh, this a path parameter must have to be provided uh, by the user and in the restore task section um, uh, we have volume restore and here similarly we have a function and the driver and in the parameters we have just two parameters one is include and the exclude include specifies the list of pattern uh, to restore uh, during the rest uh, uh, list of pattern for the directory or file to restore and exclude similarly specify the list of pattern uh, to ignore during the restore okay so next next thing i want to show you is the re retention policy so this is uh, this is our sample retention policy here i have provided the max retention period two months so if there is any snapshot with age more than two months uh, for uh, this retention period uh, the snapshot will be outdated and cleaned up and for the successful snapshots i have provided uh, that uh, i want to keep the last five sna successful snapshots 
uh, you can also provide hourly weekly uh, field here and in the for the failed snapshots i want to keep the last uh, two snapshots and in the usage policy i have provided uh, the uh, uh, provided the usage policy as also it can be used from any of the namespaces and the next thing is the backup configuration object so uh, uh i want to i want to take backup of our deployment so here is the deployment this is a persistent volume claim for this deployment and uh and this deployment will deploy a busybox container and uh, it will use the uh, use the sample uh, data persistent volume claim and the mount path is slash source slash data so i want to take backup of this volume and the path is slash source slash data so let's see the backup configuration okay so here in the target section i have provided the information of the deployment and then in the backend section i can provide multiple backends here if i want to take backup in multiple uh backend so i for this demo i have just uh, provided one backend which is uh for uh, uh, for google cloud storage and uh the name of the backup storage is uh, gcs storage so if i show you the backup storage uh, this is the backup storage uh, which is gcs storage and uh, the provider is gcs and i have provided the gcs specific uh, bucket information here i i am going to use the stash testing bucket and uh, the prefix is q stash and uh, i i also have to provide a secret which is gcs secret uh, this will basically the access credentials uh, to access this bucket and the uh, usage policy is uh, also it this backup storage can be uh, used from any of the namespaces and the deletion policy is wipeout means that uh, if you delete this uh, backup storage the data from the uh, the data inside of this backup storage will be deleted from the backend so let's go back to the backup configuration again so uh, this is the backend section and then in the sessions section you can provide multiple sessions i have provided just one session here so you can provide multiple sessions and for each session you can configure it uh, as you need so here i have uh, provided the session history limit as one so it basically limit the backup session uh, so uh, i i have put it as one so it will always keep the last backup session and in the scheduler section i have provided any schedule and uh, in the job template you can uh, cust uh, you can provide custom values for the cron job and in the repositories uh, i have provided uh, the uh, provided the backend that i want to uh, take backup uh, so here i have provided the gcs uh, i am using the gcs uh, backend uh, so these have to be same uh, the name has uh, have to be same so here i have provided the gcs and the, uh, the directory is uh, slash workload so the backup data will be stored inside of this storage uh, in the slash workload directory so uh, and another thing is the encryption secrets the encryption secret will be used by uh, as we are using restic driver so encryption secret will be used by restic to encrypt the data in the backend and in the add-on section we have uh, we 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 have provided the add-on name which is workload and uh, in the task section i can uh, provide uh, the uh, provide any subset of the tasks that has been defined in the add-on so i am just providing the volume backup task and then uh, i have to mount the uh, mount the volume in the backup executor because uh, it was the uh, volume used by the deployment so uh, here is a yes here is the volumes and volume mounts so i need to provide it in the backup configuration so that it will be uh, used in the uh, backup executor which is basically the backup job okay so uh, let's create these resources let's first create the storage secret uh, which is gcs secret that has been used in the backup storage object and also create the encryption secret 
so the secret are, secrets are created now let's create the backup storage object so the backup storage object is created and you can see it is in the ready state so i uh, so let me show you in the cloud backend so this is our uh, prefix and inside of it you can see that we have a metadata file okay now let's create the backup configuration object so the add-on is already exist in the cluster uh, the add-on so we also need to create the retention policy object okay so let's create the backup configuration now okay so the backup configuration is created and it is in the not ready state uh, okay we also need to create the target to make the backup configuration ready so let's create the deployment so let's wait for the deployment to be ready let's wait for the backup configuration okay the backup configuration is ready now let's wait for a backup session to be triggered so i have uh, set the schedule as two minutes so it should not take long to create a new backup session let me show you other objects uh, and uh, it will and wait for the backup session to be triggered okay so here is the retention uh, restore session object here we have provided the target similarly and then in the data source uh, section we are providing uh, the repository so let me show you uh, uh, the repository is already created by qvistash operator so uh, so we have to provide this uh, repository name here and uh, we 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 will uh, we will restore the latest snapshot from this repository and here is the encryption secret we have to provide the same encryption secret that has been used in the uh, during the backup so and similarly in the add-on section we have to provide the add-on name and the task name let let's wait for a little bit for the backup session to be triggered yeah also a backup session has been created now it is in the running phase and you can see that a snapshot has been created when the backup session uh, was created so it is the snapshot is also in the running phase so the backup is now running now let's wait for it to be completed so you can see the backup is succeeded now let me show you the snapshot object so here is the snapshot object and in the component section you can see that uh, the component uh, the deployment component is here and here is the driver specific information 
Now let's create another deployment to restore the data in it. So let me show you the uh, deployment again. So we were creating a uh, we were creating a data uh, which is new data and in the slash source slash data uh, slash data dot text and we want to restore restore this data into a new deployment which is deployment two and we want to see if the data is restored there. Let's create the deployment first. This deployment two. So this is our new deployment. We will restore the data here. So the deployment is now running. Now let's create the restore session. In the restore session, we have provided the name of the uh, deployment, which is QStash recovered. So let's restore it. So the restore session has been created now and it is in the running phase. Let's wait for it to be completed. Okay, the restore is succeeded. Now let's uh, exec into the uh, exec into the deployment pod and check if the data is there. So the pod for the deployment is uh, okay. So we have exec into this pod and now let's check the source folder. So there should be a data folder. Yes. Now, if I display the data, you can see the new data is here. So the restore is successful. Okay, so this was the demo. Now let's see some of the upcoming features for Stash. The first one is application level backup. So sometimes you deploy your application using a package manager like Helm. So uh, it will not be enough to back up the manifest of your application because, because it will not be, uh, you cannot restore your original application using only the manifest. And uh, Kubestash will be aware of this uh, package, uh, package manager and will back up the related resources so that you can restore your application uh, using the same package manager that you have used earlier. And another is the backup verification feature. So basically Kubestash will verify that application is recoverable from the backup data. And uh, another one is uh, application uh, or data mobility. So you will be able to migrate your applications and data between clusters and namespaces or clouds using Kubestash. And finally, uh, the, um, there will be uh, a remote backup feature. So if you backup, uh, if you have databases like AWS RD, RDS or MongoDB, et cetera, or, uh, run, or a database running in a different cluster, you will, you will be able to backup this uh, databases using Kubestash. And these are the, uh, these are one of the key features and there will be more features uh, uh, upcoming in the future, in the future releases.